So the more observant of you will notice that um, I'm not in a caravan for this vlog, I'm actually in my office in the house. It's a bit cold out there and uh, I usually do my vlogs during the day but this one I've done in an evening. It would be a bit chilly out there, although I obviously with all the heating I could turn it on and in no time at all it would be warm enough. Right, all the heating, I've mentioned it. That's kind of the subject of this vlog. Well, not the heating itself, but kind of what goes in the heating. We're just coming up to our second, the second year that we've had the caravan, so our second anniversary. So we use a mobile engineer who obviously comes to the house, so we, it saves me lugging the caravan an hour away to a dealer, maybe waiting or, come, you know, it's a whole load of hassle for me. The dealer isn't particularly near to us and it would probably mean me taking a day out of work, whereas if he comes to the house, I can be here while he's here and ask any questions and watch it being done, really. As the guy finished the service last year, he said to me, right, if you use me, or in fact, if you use any engineer next year, you'll have the additional cost of the five-year antifreeze change. And he said, the thing is, it'll be about double the cost. Wow, I thought, okay, yeah, so, you know, he'd finished, I was signing the bits of paper and that, and he went, and I hadn't thought no more of it until uh, the other day when I booked the service, I remembered that, uh, well, this one's gonna be the antifreeze change as well, which probably brings the service bill to around 500 pounds. So this got me thinking, and I put a, just a comment on Twitter that I'd had the, got the caravan service booked, and that the, you know, I mentioned all this, and that got a bit of a conversation going, and there was questions and people chipping in with advice and, stuff on antifreeze and I realised I actually knew next to nothing about antifreeze only that it, it stops things freezing. I know uh, there was a big big thing of it back in the 1970s about um, antifreeze being in wine and I might have dreamt that up or that might actually be a thing I'm pretty sure that it doesn't happen anymore. Um, I don't really know a lot about antifreeze but I've never really needed to know a lot about it. I don't really need to know now but it's been bugging me why I'm having to change the antifreeze after two years when there's antifreeze that has a five-year lifespan. In fact, most antifreeze has a five-year lifespan. I'm looking today, this is very difficult, if not impossible, to buy antifreeze that just lasts for two years. It's all five-year stuff. So that got me researching a bit, reading too much, really more than I should really about antifreeze. Not that I'm an expert at the moment, but I've got some key points that have interested me anyway. So one of the questions was, like, why is it so expensive? Is it the same as car antifreeze? Why are there different coloured antifreezes? How much antifreeze do I need? How do I know if it actually needs replacing, even if I'm out of warranty and I just want to replace it? How do I check the strength of the antifreeze mixture currently in my system? And lastly, why do caravan manufacturers only put two years lifespan antifreeze in from you? So the more you dig into this two year antifreeze thing, the kind of more questions you get, and actually the crosser, the more angry you get about it, because it's just there's just no, in my opinion, there's no need for it. The only thing that would stop this rant being particularly valid is that this year, caravans manufacturers are putting ready mixed five year antifreeze in. So you won't have to, anyone buying a caravan today won't have this in two years time. So firstly, why are there different coloured antifreeze and what are the different, what do the other colour, the other, what do the colours mean? Well, all antifreeze is manufactured clear and the manufacturers, manufacturers decide to put whatever dye in it they want. Alder use like a magenta, so pink colour. Um, Bailey use a blue colour for the two year fill up. But it doesn't mean that blue antifreeze is always two years. It doesn't mean that magenta antifreeze is always five years. It, there's two different types, well mainly two different types, glycol and glycerin. Now it doesn't, now it does, blue isn't glycol and, and pink glycerin. Isn't it? They're not like the toilet things like pink and blue, pink, you know what they are. It, there seems to be no standard in the colour anyway. If I've got blue antifreeze in my older heating in my Bailey, it says that you should top it up with blue antifreeze. Maybe that's fine, but wait a minute, don't mix types. So how do I know it's blue glycerin or blue glycol? I don't know, I'm not a scientist, I don't even know what the difference between those chemicals is. So that's confusing from the off. They don't, there's no standardization in the colors. Now there seems to be a couple of standards in the numbering of antifreeze, uh, the ones I've found out, the ones that seem to be relevant to caravans are G12, G13 and G12++. You know, what are they? I mean, it's, I know all this stuff you might not need to know, but you know, if you want to know, it's difficult to find out. So G13 
contains a silicate additive more suited for long-term applications and kinder on certain metals so aluminium cast iron and magnesium alloy g12 is better for older heating systems and i think this really refers more to houses because it talks about copper and brass pipes now i'm hoping the caravan doesn't have um, copper and brass pipes heating pipes in surely not so Alda says that G13 has the same exceptional performance as G12++. I don't even know what the performance of G12++ is. So I'm, I'm going, if, I, if they're telling me to use G13, that's what I'll use. Two main different types, as I said earlier, is glycol and glycerin. Now I don't know one from the other. Now I, know, I do know from reading, glycerin is more environment, environmentally friendly than glycol, but it could probably still strip the skin off a raccoon quicker than the time it takes me to peel an orange. I mean, this isn't environmentally friendly stuff and should not be drunk or just poured down the toilet. It's just, it's not good for the, it's not good for the planet in, in any shape. In fact, Alder use glycol in their antifreeze as well as glycerine, but it's recycled glycol. So you've got the more environmentally f damaging glycol been recycled so basically it's still as damaging as it was but what they're doing they're reusing it so they're basically not pouring it away and that makes it environmentally friendly so recycling something that's damaging to the environment is environmentally friendly these days still as caravanners we're probably quite environmentally friendly i mean we're not jetting off we're not using transatlantic flights all are we're certainly not we're not using transatlantic flights to go to climate change summits I mean, you know, that in itself is hypocrisy. We're doomed. <sighs> anyway, let's not get onto the environment because I know very little about it other than it's burning in Australia at the moment. So I don't, I don't pretend to be a scientist and, you know, some of this stuff, take with a pinch of salt and research yourself if you're more interested than, than I am. I'm just interested in why they're using two-year antifreeze and not five. So what the heck is antifreeze anyway? I mean, it's, it obviously stops your pipe from, from freezing, which is, is good because it prevents damage into any moving parts. It also contains stuff to stop the uh, pumps and metal bits and pieces being damaged. So diluted antifreeze. You can buy ready-made, ready-mixed antifreeze, which has already got water in it, or you can buy a kind of pure antifreeze and add water to it. Um, of course, being a caravan, you can't add normal water to it. You need, basically you need unicorns bits. Actually, that's not true. You need deionized water. So, see that's one of the problems. I've read on some forums, I've read that manufacturers up until recently had been just using tap water to dilute the antifreeze that they put in caravans from new, which of course is gonna, gonna not gonna be so kind on the, on the heating system. So Alda now do a ready mixed versions. I think from this year, caravan manufacturers are gonna use that. So they can't, basically can't, well, add stuff that's gonna damage the heating system. So that's it really, just a quick video on antifreeze. Never thought I'd make a video on antifreeze, but then I never thought I'd make a video on jockey balls either. Enough said about that. So key factors are, you can't tell what antifreeze you need just by checking the color. You need to get, if you've got an Alder heating, it's best to get G13 or G12++. It's full of damaging environmental compounds. Wow, is that, does that, does that make sense? If you, if you get the undiluted stuff and you need to dilute it, don't use tap water, use unicorn's piss. If you can't get that, use deionized water. That's pretty much it. And remember, if you've got a caravan that's coming up for its second service, you're going to be hit hard with those costs. But having said all that, now I've not had a modern blown air heating system, but we had a 2011 caravan and that had blown hair, blown hair, blown hair, so blown air heating. And we weren't keen on it at all. It wasn't, we couldn't regulate the temperature. I guess modern ones are much better, but overall I like the Alder heating system and I'm not overly worried about spending 250 pound every five years to keep it ticking over. But it's a personal thing, obviously. You might, you've got blown air, you might love it, and, and I certainly wouldn't change a caravan to get out of heating, but there you are. 
Let me know your thoughts below as always. Uh, thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe, it helps the channel. Um, we'll see you in the next one.